much like Picasso or Monet or Van Gogh, Warhol has become a household name when it comes to art. He's probably the best known of our pop art artists. Now, he will begin his career as a commercial artist. This is really, really common. You have a lot of students coming out of art school. They can't make it as a fine artist because no one knows them. It's kind of the way things work. And so they move into commercial art. And that's where Warhol will end up. And he shows a great deal of innovation and a great deal of talent in this field. But eventually, he will be noticed, specifically at an event at the Buffalo Museum of Art. And a collector will recognize his Campbell's soup cans, and it really goes from there. It's kind of like Jackson Pollock and that uh, major story in 1949 that propels him to international fame. We see something similar from Warhol. Now, when he's selecting his subject, he's always going to select something with mass consumer appeal. And these are the things that are advertised, they're ubiquitous in the home. Something that everyone would recognize no matter what. It doesn't matter if you're poor, working class, wealthy, it doesn't matter your race, your gender. He's picking things that are ultimately ubiquitous at the time. Now, I have to point out, this is ubiquitous at the time, in the 1960s, the 1970s. These are not ubiquitous items for us today. For example, Brillo pads, I'm not sure they even exist today. But they would have been very common at the time. And the piece we're going to look at is green Coca-Cola bottles. And this is, again, a massive piece. A lot of these pieces are. And there's a reason for that. It draws us in. You always want to go to the biggest piece in an art museum. And these artists, in a lot of ways, are competing with each other for viewership. And so that will play out. There are other reasons as well, but we'll get into some of those later. Now, when we look at the piece, you'll notice that it's a repetition of this simple green Coca-Cola bottle. Now, how does he do that? Well, he's not hand painting them. In fact, what he's doing is he is silk screening. So what you do is you create the silk screen, you take a frame, you coat it with this light sensitive emulsion, and then you put your design on top of it. You shine a light through it. Wherever the light hits hardens, everything else stays soft. So you wash out anything that was blocked by the black on your original pattern. And then you can use it to repeat pretty much any form. In fact, if you're wearing a t-shirt right now, it's probably silk screened. It's the most common form. And it's an easy way to start a business if you're ever interested. Uh, starting silk screen printing for t-shirts. You can start up for a couple of thousand dollars and be ready to go pumping out these t-shirts. That's how we do this so rapidly. But he's using it individually. So each of these Coke bottles is an individual silk screen and there's intentional variation. Not much, but there is. For example, some are greener, some are lighter. Some have more of that brown black color. Some are more faded with that color because of course this is two screens being used one over the other. And this is intentional. Now, why Coke? He's choosing Coke because at the time it had become ubiquitous. And there's a bit of a story to that. After World War II or during World War II, the GIs were frequently shipped Coke. And so Coke suddenly becomes ubiquitous across the planet. Places that had never seen Coke, islands in the South Pacific, or areas where the war touches suddenly have Coke. And so he's playing off of this ubiquity. In Warhol's world, everyone knows and drinks Coke. Therefore, it is going to speak to everyone. Very much seeking out that ubiquity, that universality that we've seen artists looking for since De Stiel and earlier. And the same ideas start to apply today. We see Ai Weiwei playing off of this. In his creation of this antique vase, it's a very old Chinese antique vase, which he's painted the Coca-Cola label on. And by using Coca-Cola, we ultimately get that idea, this idea of capitalism, idea of consumerism, mass production, mass marketing. 
The repetition also represents the dominance of the product in American culture. So it's going to be the sort of thing that we see reproduced over and over and over again. We're going to understand it because of its ubiquity, because it's always surrounding us. And he would be immersed in mass production. He's mass producing his own pieces. By using this silkscreen technique, he can create hundreds or thousands of pieces in a single day or a single week. He even calls his studio the factory to get across these ideas. So when we go back and look at the piece and look at this green Coca-Cola bottles, the really concrete imagery draws us in. And the interpretation is both at a very surface level, very basic, the ideas of mass consumerism, but also deeper. For example, you could look at this and say, well, what makes any one bottle stand out? And do we want that bottle to stand out? And is that like life, like me in a society? Do I want to stand out or do I want to fit in? Is this a constant argument going on in everyone's head and being captured here by Warhol in a depiction of hundreds of Coca-Cola bottles? Sometimes things go deeper than they first appear.